have Gabby and Alec Clayton. Gabby is an artist. Uh, putting someone. Gabby is an artist, a web and graphic designer, an editor, among many other things. Alec is an artist, writer, and critic, also a, among many other talents. And together they run Mud Flat Press. And I'm just going to turn it over to them. Okay, thank you. It's great to see you, everybody. So I'll start off with a little history. Uh, Gabby and I met each other in New York City in 1973, where we worked with this crazy service organization that uh, housed people and fed people and helped people find jobs. And we worked without pay and we all, the staff all lived in the back of the store. It was a wild and crazy and wonderful experience. And when they a newspaper, when first started, it was a monthly paper and eventually became weekly. And I was the editor of the paper and Gabby did writing and editing and illustrations and I did illustrations and we designed ads and so forth. And we did that until 1977. And in 1977, we decided uh, we'd had our son Noel by then. He was a baby and I was pregnant with our son Bill. And we decided that, that was, it was time to get out of New York and leave everything for everybody. And Alex's parents lived in Mississippi and were getting older, so we decided to go to Mississippi. and. We did that and we started a similar organization we called Persons, which we ran a shelter out of our home. And we also published first a weekly newspaper and then for a very brief time, a monthly magazine. And then in 1983, we started Mississippi Arts and Letters, a literary magazine, literary and arts magazine for the state of Mississippi that we were able to keep going until 1985. Um, we were named one of the 100 best fiction markets in the United States by Writer's Digest magazine months before we went bankrupt in 1985. And so then after that, I got a job as an adjunct teacher in the art department at the local college, University of Southern Mississippi. And Gabby decided to go back to college and major in art. And so she was a student in the same department where I was teaching. And she was majoring in drawing and painting. And then you can follow up there. Yeah, and then in um, 19, well, let's see, I was in my end of my junior year. Alec was promised that his, with his um, contract to be an adjunct would be continued the next year and we rented a house and moved out of married student housing and then right before the quarter was supposed to start they said oh sorry we decided to take away your half part-time adjunct teaching job and give it to a woman full-time because her husband they've been courting in the business school and he said he would come from New York to teach if we gave his wife a full-time job, too. So... Um, so they kicked me out on my ass. <laughs> they, they kicked Alec out, and I was so angry at the art department that I changed my major that day to, to film and video and animation. My dad had been a film editor, so I decided, fine, oh, I can't face this. So I changed my major to film. And then did a year of film studies there and then transferred to Evergreen to get us out of the South because we realized that that was really not where we wanted to stay. Okay, now we'd like to show you some of, start with some of Gabby's art and let her talk about her process. One piece, or two pieces actually. Um, my work at this point is all done digitally on an iPad. And so these are two of the pieces that I did at the end of 2019. And I have uh, 
um, very short under a minute videos that show the whole process and they'll flash sometimes and that's because um, I'm changing the layers but these are this one is about just under a minute long and it records the process as I'm doing it so you'll see where I change my mind and put take turn things off or change colors. Sometimes when it pauses like that, it's because there's some smaller details that I'm working on. And it'll keep going. I don't know what I was thinking about there, but I put sweet. <laughs> This would have taken place over hours or I'm not sure how long. And you say she keeps trying things, putting things in and then taking them out. And that's Move the end around. of that one. And then here comes the next one. Some of these, a couple of these I've got up on YouTube, but not these two. I should get those up there too. Like I said, the flashing is because I kept turning layers on and off. Gabby, um, China says in the comments, let me know if you need music for these. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and let's see. There, that one's over. So now we'll come back here. We'll, we'll show can, more in a little bit. Okay, of so like that. yeah, so we we can take a tour around the house and show some of my art and some of Gabby's art and some paintings by other artists that we've collected, including at least two that are on their screen right now. So first I want to read this little story that I wrote and it's a, a children's book or will be if we ever get around to doing illustrations for it. And I've never written a children's book before so I wanted to read it to you know, see what you think about it. So it's a new thing for me, so bear with me. But, but he's published nine novels and is waiting for me to edit his 10th and a book about art criticism, so it's not like this is first writing. <laughs> okay, it's called Billy Bland's Improbable Future Ghost. Billy Bland was blithely walking to school one bright and sunny morning when he ran into a ghost. Well, he didn't really run into it, but there it was right in his path, floating in the air like a leaf in the breeze but it wasn't breezy. Oh, who are you? And why do you look just like me? And why are you floating there in the air like a leaf in the breeze when there's not even a hint of a breeze? Billy Bland asked the ghost. I'm your improbable future ghost. I'm you long after you are no longer alive, far, far, far away in the future. And I'm floating in the air like a leaf in the breeze because that's what ghosts do. Oh, but it's not the future, it's now. And I'm still alive. I'm not even grown up yet, Billy Bland said as he continued walking along the sidewalk heading to school. If ghosts can pass through walls, surely they can pass through time, Billy Bland's improbable future ghost said continuing to float in the air like a leaf in the breeze while the school bus rode past, and Billy Bland's friend Johnny Jump Up rode by on his bicycle. Why are you here, Billy Bland asked his improbable future ghost. I'm here to keep you from making terrible, horrible mistakes with terrible, horrible consequences, his improbable future ghost said. Like I know Johnny Jump Up is going to ask you to race him to school. You most definitely should not do that. 
If you do that, it will be a terrible, horrible mistake. How do you know, Billy Bland asked. Because I'm from the future. I know what happens because for me, it has already happened. You will be so intent on racing that you won't see the car turning that corner up ahead and he will run into you and hurt you and you will be in the hospital for six days and you'll have to use crutches for walking for a long, long time after that, Billy Bland's improbable future ghost answered. So Billy Bland told Johnny Jump Up, I can't race you and you better be extra special careful or you'll get hurt. And no sooner had Billy Bland said that did a car run, turn the corner too fast and almost hit Johnny Jump Up who stopped just in time because he was being extra special careful. Ooh, that was really, really lucky, said Billy Bland, rushing up to Johnny Jump Up and standing by his bicycle. It wasn't lucky, his improbable future ghost said. It was because you told him to be extra special careful. Gosh, you're right, Billy said. I guess you saved him. Johnny Jump Up, jumping back on his bicycle, said, Who are you talking to? Billy said, My improbable future ghost. There's nobody here, Johnny Jump Up said, and he took off pedaling his bicycle as fast as he could. Billy's improbable future ghost said, He can't see me or hear me. Only you can see me and hear me. In school, Billy raised his hand to ask the teacher, Miss Burger Bumbler, a question. Yes, Billy Bland, what is it? Miss Burger Bumbler asked. I have an improbable future ghost that only I can see and only I can hear. Do other people have improbable future ghosts? Billy asked. I think that would be highly improbable, Miss Burger Bumbler said. Now quit asking silly impertinent questions. After school was out and Billy Bland was walking home with his improbable future ghost floating along just over his left shoulder, his ghost said, tomorrow morning, Johnny Jump Up is going to ask you to play hooky with him. Whatever you do, please don't play hooky with him. It will be a terrible, horrible mistake that will have terrible, horrible consequences in the far off future. Sure enough, when he was walking to school the next morning, Johnny Jump Up pulled up next to him on his bicycle and said, Hello, Billy Bland. Hello, Johnny Jump Up, Billy Bland said. And then, he, then Johnny Jump Up said, Let's not go to school today. Let's play hooky and go to the mall and eat lots of candy and go to the movie and eat lots of popcorn. I can't do that, Billy Bland said. My improbable future ghost said, if I go with you now, it will be a terrible, horrible mistake with terrible, horrible consequences. And you and I will grow up to be terrible, horrible people, grown-ups, who do terrible, horrible things and get in a lot of trouble. You don't have an improbable future ghost, Johnny Jump Up said. There's no such thing. Is too, Billy Bland said, sounding very put upon. He's right here with us, floating in the air like a leaf in the breeze. But Billy Bland's improbable future ghost said, He can't see me and he can't hear me. Only you can see me and hear me. So you have to convince Johnny Jump Up that playing hooky is not a good thing to do. How can I do that? Billy Bland asked. And Johnny Jump Up said, who are you talking to? Nobody, Billy Bland said, because he knew Johnny Jump Up would not believe him if he said he was talking to his improbable future ghost. And then he said, we can't skip school because if we do, we will grow up to be terrible, horrible grown-ups who do terrible, horrible things, and we will get in a lot of trouble. Besides, I don't want to skip school. I like school. We get to see all our friends and learn a lot of good stuff, and today is hot dog day in the cafeteria. Oh boy, Johnny Jump Up said, I love hot dogs. 
You're right, we should not skip school. I'll race you to school. No, I can't race you either, Billy Bland said. Remember what happened yesterday? You almost got run over by a car. You're right again, Johnny Jump Up said. And Billy Bland said, if you go slow enough, I can walk beside you all the way to school. And that's exactly what they did. Johnny Jump Up rode his bicycle very slowly and Billy Bland walked beside him and they were both happy because it was a beautiful, bright and sunny morning and they got to school just before the first bell rang. And Billy Bland's improbable future ghost disappeared and went back to the future because Billy Bland didn't need him anymore. The end. So, Alec is sort of waiting for me to illustrate it, but first I have to finish illustrating somebody else's book and then edit Alex's next novel before I get to that. So I've got a stack of things to do. <laughs> okay, so we can walk around now and show people art and feel free to jump in with comment. There's one of Gabby's. That was done it's on the iPad and then printed at Graphic Communications downtown in Columbia when we had an art show for a couple of months ago. <laughs> and then there's one of my paintings. And on the wall behind this is another an old painting of mine. I'm going to fit on the screen. If anybody has questions as we're doing this, please jump in. And so here's some more of Gabby's work. The two on top were done when she was a student in Mississippi back in the 80s. And then the 200 are more recent works, digital paintings. And that one says, she said, because I said so, that's why all the time. <laughs> and here's one of mine. And here are two more of Gabby's. Gabby, what program yeah. do you use on your iPad for drawing? Um, I couldn't understand. Okay. What program do you use on your iPad? Oh, I mostly Procreate. Okay. Um, I also use Sketchbook sometimes, but usually Procreate. Okay, thank you. Which is either free or something like $10. Not an expensive program and it works really well. That painting we're looking at now is a woman who bought a bunch of my paintings asked if she could take that home with her and keep it for a week, decided she wanted it, and after two days she brought it back and said it scared her. <laughs> there's a little one of mine right over here. Yeah, here's another one of Gabby's own drawings, figure drawing class in Mississippi. And this is one by an artist from Seattle named Alex Oge. And we were in a show at Bumbershoot years ago that was called the, the Swap Show. And all the artists in the show had to agree to swap a painting with one other artist. And so I got this one. My mother was an artist too, and that's a portrait of my father that she painted. I had one back there, but now I can't remember what it was, and I just kind of want to be quiet because this is so interesting. Uh, and uh, if I have something, I'll raise my hand again. Thank you. Okay. That's a painting our son Bill did when he was, was he a junior in high school? Yeah. Yeah. And the masks over there yeah. are also. Yeah, those, Bill made those Bill. masks too. And let's see. There's another painting of mine. And we'll go into a, There's more. I'm going to quickly go by some of these. This one. This is the oldest painting that I still have. Sort of. And that's another one of Gabby's. And. Another one of Gabby's. I think that was from a design class. Yeah. Yeah. And 
if anybody wants to come and see them in person, you're welcome to contact us and let us know. We're happy to do that. This is more of Gabby's work. These are the first two are the ones done on the iPad. And the one with the orange just says, I'd rather be slip sliding, slip sliding away from this whole friggin' mess. And this is oh, what's her name? Sally Pinley did this. Sally is a calligrapher, and that's a portrait of our son Bill. And it's, I think most of you know Bill committed suicide after a gay bashing. And this statement here this is not my choice, this is not forced upon me. This just is, is something that we found in his notebook after he died. And she really did it from a photograph and really captured something about him. Actually, looks like it. this one. How many people here knew Ron Henson? Oh, yes, I did. So that's a painting he did, and it's oh, called, yeah, it's called The Death of Marat, and it's taken after a painting by the French uh, artist Jacques Louis David. The one with Marat son after he committed suicide in a bathtub. And let's see. I think he was assassinated. Assassinated? Yeah. Right? Another one of my paintings, I probably can't get the whole thing in the screen here. It's pretty big. And Gail Ramsey Warden, here's one of her collages. And you probably can't read the writing on there, but they're saying tomato, 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 and it's called the pronunciation from the Campion Altarpiece. This is a drawing by Teddy Haggerty, a Tacoma artist, who among other things, you yeah, yeah the, he was his stand-in in the movies. Hmm. Or a stunt double or something. Or, yeah, a stunt double maybe. And that's a collage drawing of mine called Little Joan with Mask. And another little painting of mine. And we're in our bathroom here, and there, Becky Nold is in the bathroom. <laughs> so that's a painting of Becky's. Okay, more art in the bedroom. These are all my paintings. That one is called Giant Squid. And then these is, this is a very old oil stick on paper that I did back in about 1989, I think it was. That's ravishing. There's, there's some of my old <laughs> Oh yeah, there's, work. can barely see them. There's some, digital work of Gabby's from back about the same time. Um, well, yeah, about 19, I graduated from Evergreen in 88, so those would have been done in about 89. And then back here is this big room that we still call our studio, even though it's not used as a studio anymore. And it's just a bunch of my paintings. And then, again, oh, yeah, here's a bunch of Gabby's. And let's see. This one is by Thornton Willis, who's a New York artist who's quite well known, quite successful now, but his work doesn't look anything like that now. That was done when he was in graduate school in about 1967, maybe. 65, 6, something in there. And then there's another one of mine. I used to do a bunch of these that I called anatoms, and they were kind of 
bizarre creatures, part person and part animal or something. And this is by Penny Merrill. Uh, she used to live in Olympia and she lives in Los Angeles now. And another one of mine. So here's our office. And that's a portrait of our son, Bill, sleeping on the back of a chair. <laughs> and more of my paintings. Alec only did a few of the shaped canvases um, because he realized that storing them was a problem. If he had to store them, he'd have to do what Ron Henson did and build special crates for them. So is Stephanie Johnson still on, on here? Yep, I'm still. Yeah, Stephanie, you may remember that one. That was part of a series that I brought to your class to talk about years ago. And I still remember I, painting by the foot. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. And that is a, uh, let me get some hot light on that. That's Louise Williams. That big white spot is the light reflecting on the glass. Uh, Louise was an Olympia artist who died quite a while back as, from breast cancer. Trying to get you where you want. And that's another one of mine. That's part of that, Stephanie, you talked about the ones that I sold by the foot. So that was part of one of those. So we've kind of covered everything. Um, Anybody want to make comments or talk? Yes, man, about that, that collage of mine that, um, Alex showed. I got it at Value Village, this his old history book of art. And the pronunciation was interesting to me because it's when Gabriel told uh, Mary she was pregnant. So to change it into enunciation, enunciation, it just was play for me. And I enjoyed doing that. And I'm very happy you have that hanging there, Alex and Gabby. We're happy to have it. Yeah. I love your collection of art, not just your art, but others as well. It's quite wonderful. I have actually normally a lot more by other people hanging in the house, but we took most of them down when we had the studio sale recently and just put a few back up, but we're kind of lazy about doing that. Yeah. One idea that I've had is that I think it would be really interesting for somebody to curate a show of art that is collected by artists. So not your own work, but work that you have that you want to share. Um, I think it'd be fascinating because I know seeing what other people have on their walls, yeah. it's not their own work, is pretty interesting. Oh, well, yes. I was going to say, Abby, if you looked in my video last that I made with uh, Sean, I have one. Everything in my studio is other people's art, and I, I very much enjoyed seeing yours. Yeah, it's, I saw that. I like your idea. And I was happy to see my work on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to see it there. Yeah. Gabby and Alec, real quick, I wanted to read you some stuff from the comments. Um, oh, great. Carolyn said, thanks, Gabby and Alec. Very interesting. China Star said, love both of your work. Things are beautiful. I studied under Ron. Very cool. Carrie said, Gabby, are you printing these yourself? If so, on what is the printer? Um, I'm not printing them myself because I have a fairly old inkjet printer that's not really high quality. The ones that are on my wall, I got printed um, at Graphic Communications downtown Olympia, although I think their print shop for these is in Shelton or something, but they're uh, Gicle or Gicle prints. Um, and I also have some of my work available on um, Redbubble, and they're you can get it printed on paper framed or other media and also on t-shirts and other stuff coffee cups um, which is kind of fun I, I haven't had a lot of time 
to upload more there or to add more. I have a lot of work on my website, gabbyclayton.com. You see a lot of my old stuff and some newer work that I need to add more in my spare time, which I don't seem to have. <laughs> yes, and you. I don't paint anymore. A lot of you know this, and I quit painting back in about 2009 and haven't painted any since. I've spent all my time writing now. Um, a couple more comments. Becky said, this is so much fun. Wow, the artwork is eye-popping. Diana said, fun to see the artwork in your domain. Got it. Thank you. It's, it's fun to get to show it. Especially right now when we can't get out and do other things. All right. Any other questions for Gabby and Alec? I have a question. Okay, Lynette. Um, how much do you influence each other, you guys? How much uh, do you bounce off each other's ideas, not just visually, but um, you know, um, how much momentum do you get from each other and, and how much do you lose? A lot. Um, when I was painting, Gabby would often come into the studio and look and say, point out something and say, you know, this little white spot over here, you need to get rid of that. I'd say, I can't see anything else in the painting because that white spot is just... She hates little white spots. All the time, <laughs> just when they're not supposed to be And there. <laughs> she also edits all of my writing. Um, Which means if I miss something and you catch it, it's my fault, probably. <laughs> and often when we're driving somewhere in the car, and I've got a, a novel in the works, we'll discuss the plot lines, and I'll tell her, you know, well, this character said she's going to do such and such, and she said, no, he wouldn't do that. That's not right. That was going to be my next question, was how much do you, how much do you end up rowing? I know me and John end up rowing about stuff half the time, and so I was wondering how much do you end up, um, well, you know, obviously you're not going to fall out big time, but um, how much discussion? Um, Alec practiced the short story he read before this started, and I said, you got to take that word out. That's awful. And he did. He, he doesn't always, when I do that and critique something, I know that he may not agree with me, and then I let it go, but, um, which I did when he was painting, too. But I, with my work now, because I'm working pretty much completely digitally, a lot of the time I don't show him what I'm working on until I'm either thinking I'm done or know I'm done or at a point where I wonder what he thinks because I'll be sitting away from where he can just glance over and uh, so then you know I'll have to show it to him and I sometimes wait quite a while so okay I was going to say Gabby does a lot of her digital work in front of the cute television at night while I'm watching TV and she's halfway watching TV and drawing on her iPad. I, I think the uh, discussions are important even though sometimes um, we all kind of um, are a little, you know, we, we, we get defensive when we don't make ourselves understood in a discussion like that. I think they're really actually, I find them very useful um, to have other people's input and uh, so I was just wondering if you had the same. Oh the yeah, I've been writing and, and making art. Um, before we started I was thinking if somebody asked me who were the people who influenced my art I'd have to say a whole lot of people including some of you who are watching this um, but the two that I would put at the top of the list probably are Alec Clayton and Kenneth Patchen um who i just adored his work his posters his way of incorporating words and pictures which you really didn't see a lot of but i do that and some of it gets pretty political um not all of it but 
that, that's important to me as a way to keep me grounded. But I also really try to not get caught up too much in details and remember that I'm making art and pay attention to line and color and the feeling of the whole piece, not just the little pieces of it. Um, which on an iPad in some ways is easier and in some ways is harder. But it's lovely to clean up and when I'm done and cleaning the studio, I just close the iPad and I'm done. <laughs> no brushes to clean. <laughs> so that, Gabby, brings me to my question then, because for the for the majority of the time that I've known you, I've known you working with media. Um, and digital things. I didn't know that you drew. Is was it the iPad, the invention of the iPad that kind of brought that back? Do you actually work with, you know, chalk or pencil or pastel or anything? Uh, well, I was when I was in college. I worked with pencil and charcoal and ink and a lot of ink and and um, that kind of work. Um, but I I wound up moving away from that I, I went to evergreen and graduated and then wasn't able to find a job right away so i went to graduate school and became a licensed mental health counselor and i'm actually kind of at the end of my career on that i still have a little bit of work but i'm not really actively looking for clients but i wound up in 1996 um, well, actually, our son Bill was the one who taught me not to be afraid of the computer because I was afraid I would break something and he was just, mom, just do it. And so after Bill died, I learned, I taught myself how to do web design because I wanted to put his story online and wound up becoming a, a web designer and graphic artist while I was also doing mental health counseling. And so I do a lot of web design and I've done a, a fair amount of graphic design and logo design and really focused on that until I uh, got a part-time job at Interfaith Works. I was their office manager. Um, somebody's at our door. I was, at our op I was their office manager and I had enough money from that job to buy an iPad. I, I bought the iPad and decided the reason I wanted it was to go back to making art for art's sake, not for, and just for me, not for commercial purposes. Um, and it took me probably six months to a year of just making marks of it and playing with it and trying out different programs before I felt like, okay, I'm, I'm getting used to this as a tool and now I can just do it. Um, and I'm still learning, of course. <laughs> Alec, there was a question for you in the um, comments. Uh, I guess it's for you. What are your novel genres and where do you publish? Oh, you could talk about my flat. Books. Okay, I'm, I missed the first part of the, something about the novel. What are your novel genres and where do you publish? Okay, they, they, okay they're self-published. That's We formed our own publishing company. We call Mud Fat Press. We publish... We started out doing my books, and then we started publishing for other people, too. Uh, the genre is uh, literary fiction. It's mostly stories um, about people that could be your neighbor or your friend or relatives, real people in real situations, or I should say realistic, not real, because they're not they're fiction. But uh, a lot of them were set in the Deep South, where I grew up. Uh, the latest one I'm working on is set in Olympia, and its uh, main character is uh, a woman who is a lesbian living on a farm outside of town and a school teacher. And that's not the one he's waiting on me to edit. That's the next one after that, so I'm getting behind on my work. Yeah, the one that I'm waiting for her to edit is one called Locked In, and it's about a man who has locked in syndrome, which is a very rare condition where you're totally paralyzed and can't talk, 
and he learns to communicate just by uh, uh, letters. He can pick a letter of the alphabet. His wife has an alphabet. Then she will point to letters and he will blink his eye once if it's yes, this one. And if she wants to ask questions, he can answer yes or no by blinking his eyes. And he reminisces about his life leading up to where he came down with this condition. Here, I'm going to turn the camera around and show you the books because we have them stacked here. These are all of Alex's books. Huh. And these are all of the books of other peoples that we've published, um, including some by John Knoll, but he uses other names. So, and we've got a cook, vegan cookbook and uh, some poetry and short stories and it's Mudflat Press. And they're all on there and they can be ordered. Um, they, some of them usually can, our Alex books can be bought usually from us here, but they're also available at Orca Books and um, browsers, browsers and on Amazon. Okay, there's another comment. Um, Jennifer said, you two are an inspiration. Thank you for sharing. Lois said, thank you for sharing your art and yourselves. So happy to get to know you better. And we're about at that wrap up time. So any last quick questions for Gabby and Alec? Okay, well, thank you so much, thank both you. of you. Thank okay, you. Thanks. So, yeah, let's hear it for Gabby and Alex. Thank you. Many thanks, many thanks. Thank you. Bravo.